Hello everyone, this is Bobo the Vulture, and it's time for more Let's Play Gran Turismo 2. Um, last time was a somewhat longer than usual episode because I uh, got it in my mind that I really needed to get the Renault Spaz F1, which I have. There it is. And with it we got a Mazda Miata C-Spec, how exciting. Alright, so, first thing this Espas has to do, after the thing that it's already done, is go to the GT All-Stars and win back a certain amount of its, a certain amount of its worth. Maybe not all of its worth, hard to say how this will go. I mean, it won't win back all of its worth, because, uh... I'm only planning on doing this once. Oh. Darn it, I hit the circle button again, which means engage to this game. Engage. Triangle is the one you have to use to cancel out. I was thinking the circle would go back. I wanted to check to make sure I had the best possible, uh... The... best possible tires. Guy is a handful. Guy is quite a little urchin. Now, this car does appear to have a giant spoiler wing on the top of it, but it is still shaped like sort of a giant, sort of blendy, bricky sort of thing. So bear in mind that its aerodynamics are not the best in the world. You're making me look foolish. I've already looked more foolish than this going through the game before, though, so... I guess it's not the end of the world that this is happening right now, too. Now, the thing I want to know most of all now is, does this thing have a sixth gear? I suppose it would be easy enough to find out. Um, I could either, uh, race it as a manual just once and see how many gears I could get up, or I could just go into the, uh, you know, custom settings and, uh, see whether, let's see how many gear ratios are there.
And there I go again. But through a uh, certain amount of uh, hard work, grit, and determination, I have come back to roughly where the big boys play. Come back to roughly WCW. And I'm trying to make that bull move past that uh, jag. Getting repassed. Can I catch up with all the rest of these guys? too much. Oh no. Wait, that guy's panicking up there. He knows. He knows that I'm on his tail and I have his scent. He is the hunted. He knows he doesn't, he doesn't deserve that high spot up there. <laughs> Cheat to win! <sighs> All stars, you just got beat by a minivan. How's it feel? How's it feel? A minivan that repeatedly almost completely eliminated itself. Lotus Elise GT1, that's what that was. Okay. Next. Let's get our bonus and our prize card. Let's not save our game. Let's continue. Let's continue to find a way to get out of here. Let's go to the uh, NA uh, Cup and... trounce some things over there. Again, using a minivan. It's the fun way to do it, folks. It is the fun way to do it. Tune car number one. I'm the Toon Con number one. Ain't none higher. That's for show. It does have six gears. They don't need to be as wide as all this, do they? Was it 21? Let's try 15. See what we get out of it. It may just be that uh, the gearing is set where it is, just because, you know, the acceleration is fine. You'll end up losing some space by having to shift gears excessively. And uh, the top speed is more limited by aerodynamics, really, than the uh, strength of the engine. I mean, it's, a, it's cutting, a big, cutting a big hole.
I will say it is uh, pretty high strung now. There should be no instance in which uh, you're getting down first gear, but... Uh but this car does like to uh, dance and skip and play games. to uh, play is, let's play Screech Against the Rev Limiter. Glide through turns without putting too much uh, gas on it and too much brake on it. It handles them okay. Of course, it'll handle smacking sideways into a wall not that well, no matter what you do. We've proved our supremacy in the autumn ring. Oh, come on, racing style Peugeot 306. You're not even going to be number two? Duh. You sick of me. I hope your death is less than two hours. Alright, so we got the crazy minivan that is uh, killing everyone now. So this is not actually literally killing everyone. It is just being uh, other virtual drivers in this uh, game. It's not even virtually killing anyone. It's kind of let down now. Nah, it's fine, folks. It's 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 good. It's a good car. Well, it's not really a car, but you get what I mean. All right, so. Will the Renault Espace F1 be the first car that I've had in a long time to actually uh, win a race at Laguna Seca? Considering how much of an edge it seems to have over uh, other cars in this championship, jeez, you'd hope so. But uh, I could still screw it up. Just watch me try. Ring, ring, ding, ring.
Now, as I recall, um, now of course, uh, we read in the description a little bit earlier that uh, the Renault Spaz F1 is essentially a Williams F1 chassis with a minivan body bolted onto it. Williams Renault F1 chassis with a minivan body bolted on. Um, which means that this is essentially a very bulky and uh, not very good Formula 1 car that way. Um, now, Formula 1, uh, in terms of a race, has never been to Laguna Seca. Um, the American venues that Formula 1 ever raced in the uh, United States were, uh, I think, a year or two at Riverside. Uh, which is a track that got torn down many years ago. I think in the uh, 80s. Um, possibly. Um, Watkins Glen. There were a couple of city uh, courses. Um, like Detroit. Uh, Phoenix. the uh, Long Beach was a very popular one. Um, they still uh, race uh, Champ Guard stuff there. But it was an F1 venue for a number of years. But, um... And Indianapolis. Um, and now there's Austin, and there may be one in uh, the Meadowlands, or around the Meadowlands. And I'm probably missing one or two. I can't remember if I mentioned Sebring. I think they might have done a Grand Prix at Sebring at some point. That would have been many, many years ago that they had. But either way, Laguna Seca never been here. But um, as part of uh, one of the events that they do um, every year at Laguna Seca, um, they have a big uh, race weekend. Uh, Historic racing, um, the uh, Monterey Historics, I guess what they call it, um, and some of it is, and a lot of it is historic, like it's old old racing cars. But uh, sometimes they'll have fairly new stuff out there. They'll do demonstration runs with things, and um, it was a couple years back, but I believe uh, Toyota Grand Prix brought. Of course, it was some number of years back. Toyota doesn't have an F1 effort and hasn't for a couple years now. Which is sad, but either way. Um, they brought their test driver, a fellow by the name of Ricardo Zonta, um, to Laguna Seca to try and set a lap record using an F1 car. And I believe he did, but I uh, don't recall the details of it. And just going off of the assumption that he did, because in theory an F1 car probably should be able to go around a circuit like this faster than just about anything. Well, not only am I winning in a big way, but the whatever car is in second place is leading the uh, best of the rest in a big way. Spoon Integra Type R. That's a very nice Type R. Maybe I can win one of those and go under that Type R race. Well, there you go, folks. And that was actually a mostly clean run of Laguna Seca. I don't know if it's the fastest time. I don't know whether or not I would need an even faster time in order to be able to beat the All-Stars. But I was at least able to get the car around cleanly, which I can't say of every time I go out in this game and try and uh, race stuff, you know? I can't say that every time. I can't do it. It's no good. Can't do it. No. I can't do it. Okay, so I've actually won all of these events. Um, what does that make the car collection look like now? Well, it's going to involve a... What? 
that. I mean, this is good. I do. Uh, I am happy about this. And the spoon integer type R, as we just saw, is a really good um, racing car for the uh, front wheel drive world and for the type R world. I'll probably get in this and see what I can do with it um, in the near future. What do they have to say about the Spoon Sports Integra Type R? Spoon! It's the quintessential lightweight car. Sacred performance. Without sacrifice income. Never day driving. The standard Spoon 2 liter size. Okay. Equipped with lightweight carbon fiber hood, this car is already turned in the amazing time of a minute and three seconds at the Sukuba circuit. Sukuba Kuba. Well, that's cool. Let's, uh. Let's ditch this boss for a minute, get in the spoon integer type R. And I tell you what, folks, um. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one a video. And when we come back next time, we will check out the excitement of this Spoonmobile. Spoonmobile! So, look forward to that, folks. This is Bobo the Vulture. This is uh, Let's Play Gran Turismo 2. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye!